Hey everyone, welcome to Somerset, Pennsylvania. We're here at the Flight 93 Memorial Site. Those of you who were born before 2001, pretty sure you know what this is all about. This is the flight from the 9-11 tragedy, the terrorist attack on America, where the passengers on this flight fought against the terrorist who took over the plane and ended up crashing it here in this field in prevents of a reached New York City, I'm sorry, Washington, for the Capitol building. They ended up saving thousands of lives, but took their own and are considered heroes to the state. Now, if you don't know what I'm referring to, you're welcome to do a Google search about it. There's even a movie they made about it. There's a lot more stuff you could educate yourself on, better than I could do explaining to you guys. But we're here today at the memorial site to see what it has to offer and just to experience it here in person and learn a little bit more of what took place. So come along with me and we'll check it out. Now this place is actually really spread out over a couple of miles. It's much larger than I was anticipating. I'm at the one parking site here and we're gonna follow the signs for a Memorial Plaza and crash site, but there is a lot of distance to cover here if you decide to walk the whole property. So just be prepared for that. If you're looking for specific areas, you'll wanna look on Google Maps and park closest to it. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck walking for uh, at least an hour or two, I'd imagine. So as I mentioned, it does show the Capitol building was the intended target. So I'm gonna give you kind of like a brief tour this place just because there's scattered showers off and on and I don't want to get caught in a downpour here so like I said there's a lot of things you could look into yourself online for various websites and other videos that have been done here but the best way to experience it is obviously to come here for yourself but this shows the flight trajectory did take off from New York New Jersey made it out to Ohio and then circled back heading towards Washington and it crashed here due to the brave souls aboard that plane. Now if anything I am showing you, you want to pause, you're welcome to. Here's a pretty disturbing photo of the crash site itself. Look at the depression in the ground. Crater 15 feet deep, roughly 30 feet across. Crew and passengers of Flight 93. They literally sacrifice themselves in order to save others. Says thousands of small pieces of aircraft are found. Photo shows the largest piece of the plane recovered a section of the fuselage measuring about six feet by seven feet. Put it on your shirt, not your jacket. Put it on your shirt. And here's a look at the memorial site now. What they created to remember the tragedy and the heroism. So you can see they got a seating area here, park rangers on hand, and as I mentioned, lots of walking. It's almost a big loop. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to fly the drone here. I may try to, but all of this property here is all part of it, and there's a walking, like a walking trail, I guess you would consider, that goes nearly around the whole thing. I did plan on walking it, but with the threat of rain, I'm just going to stick to the closest spots. But to spare you the long walk, I'm just going to pick up at the next focal point. So 
I'll see you there. Something I just discovered, I saw these little markers here. It says dial and discover. You can actually take your own tour, dial the phone number, press 303, and it will share information about what you're seeing here. So that is an option if you want to do that, to do a kind of a self-guided tour. And here's some narration along the way. So along our travels here, there's a marker here that says crash site and debris field. Flight 93 crashed in the field in front of you, traveling approximately 563 miles per hour. The quarter mile walkway is sloped wall mark. The edge of the 40 acre crash site and debris field. 17 ton sandstone boulder was placed in the field to mark the approximate location of the impact point. The crater that resulted from the crash site was 30 by 15. Individual panels of the wall of names are located along the flight path. From a distance, the marble wall appears solid. to a symbolic reference to the unified teamwork. So as we pan up, this is the field where the plane actually crashed. And the boulder that was mentioned is over there. And perfect timing, we actually hear a plane flying overhead. But I'm going to get up a little closer and we'll give you a better look at that stone. So looking straight ahead, they placed that large boulder there as the marker for the impact zone. So that's the approximate area where the plane touched down and crashed. But as I zoom out, this whole entire field was a debris field. So. Just imagine carnage and shrapnel and a really terrifying, upsetting sight that would have been laid in front of us here. A couple of things I would like to point out is that number one, there is no admission to come here. This is a free public park. Number two, operating hours are basically from sunrise to sunset. And you're going to want proper footwear, as you can see. It's not doing it justice on camera. This place is really sprawled out. There is a visitor center up there or a welcoming center. I'm going to actually show you on Google Maps where I parked, which is closest to the crash site. If you park up there, which is a long, it's over a mile to get to it. You have a much longer walk. So I'll show you in Google Maps where I'm parked if you want to kind of retrace my steps here. It looks like there's a little kind of memorial memento type thing here where people have placed items, paying their respects. Everything from coins to medallions, necklaces, badges. So it's very nice people have done that. If you wish to, you could contribute a piece for yourself. I unfortunately do not have anything to contribute. Wasn't aware of it, but if I do return, I will leave something marking my existence and respects to what happened here. I feel like way up there, that's actually a observation deck looking upon the crash site where I am. So that is something to maybe check out when you're here, but that is a good distance away. Now that I'm zoomed out, you can see how far away I am. 
What I do plan on doing though is not walking the entire path all the way up there. I'm gonna go a little bit further ahead, directly in front of me. I'm also gonna go back and show you a walking bridge that goes over like a wetlands area, which helps accompany the whole entire path. And then towards the end, I'm gonna drive up there and give you a brief glimpse as to what is actually up there. And that should cover most of the site here. But you could pretty much spend hours here observing, walking, kind of soaking it all in, but it is pretty, I don't know what the best word to describe it, just sombering to be here. You know, it's, it's a special place. It's a sad event, but it's a memorial site. It's to help keep the memories alive. So you may have mixed emotions coming here. But one thing I do want to encourage you to do, if you haven't done so, not sure if it's available on YouTube or on any kind of movie sites or for DVDs, but there was a Flight 93 movie. It was basically a movie made about life events, true life, true story. I did watch it, and it's a very good representation and recreation of the harrowing experience of the events that took place on that day, more specifically on board that flight. So I encourage you to check it out if you're able to find it. So here's a marble wall with all the names who were aboard that flight. So in silence, I'm just gonna walk slowly across and you could read the names. I'm not saying it's true. No. It's just possible. Everybody's different. You're going to laugh because that's what people do. Just sitting here admiring the wall. It's really a great way to honor and remember all the folks who were aboard that plane. If you guys saw that one too, I kind of focused in on it. It was the woman and her unborn child. This would also look really great at nighttime as well because each one of these names has a light that would project onto it to illuminate it at night so if you ever come in the evening hours when starting to sunset might be able to get a glimpse of that be something to see but now what we're going to do is we're going to walk back past where we started where i did my intro continue on the pathway take you out over that wetlands area bridge just to show you what it's like to go in that direction and then i'll give you a little bit of a driving footage to show you the drive up to 
the uh, center up there. So a bit more to come. And as I always ask, if you are enjoying the video, that's all you gotta do. So just to give you some visual representation, we were all the way back there where that white marble wall is. Behind me here is like the little structure where the park ranger is. I did ask, got confirmation, drone flights are not permitted. So as much as I'd like to get you some aerial views, I won't be able to do it. And I'm gonna abide by their laws here, their rules, their regulations. What I can do though, is put on a Google Maps image, an aerial view of the whole entire grounds here to give you an idea as to how large of an area it is. And as you'll see, it's just a giant circle. So can't get drone air footage, but at least we could see it from satellite imagery, thanks to Big Brother who's always spying on us. But what we're gonna do now is take this pathway, which goes for a long direction. We're gonna take it though to a raised platform, like a little bridge that goes over some wetlands area. I want to show you that. Then we're going to retreat back to the car and then drive all the way up there. And like I said, I'm going to show you some of the uh, driving footage along the way because it's actually a nice drive. They have trees planted along the way. It's a curvy, windy road. And uh, it'll give you a, a better understanding as to how much area there is here to cover. So once we get by the bridge, which you could actually, let me, uh, Turn you guys around i'll show you yeah right there you see that bridge where the cars are passing the bridge is right in front of them we're going to take a walk to that but aside from that though there's other walking paths as well you can see some placards there in the field and a big windy curvy path going up the hillside there so like i said you could spend a lot of hours walking around get your steps in but if you come on a hot summer day you know, be prepared. You're going to be baking in the sun. There's no shade at all. And also with the threat of rain, be a good idea to pack an umbrella. Thankfully, the rain has held up for now. So we're going to keep moving and get as much as we can out of the way before it does start raining again. I almost forgot too. They do have a new item here to check out too called the Tower of Voices. It's newly constructed. I did hear reports that it's not complete it yet or not operational i don't know what it does but i do know you could drive up to it and we're gonna do that too after we go up to the building up there so there will be a little bit more to this video just because i did remember that i want to show you all that this place has to offer so tower of voices is the newest i don't know what this is it's like a shooting range almost um tower of voices though is the newest draw here you know the newest you know I don't know if you want to call it an attraction or not, but something to signify the importance of this location here. So we'll get to that a little bit later, but I am coming upon the bridge here. So I'll turn you around and give you a nice view of the walkway leading to it. And back by the visitor center where the park ranger is, they actually have a board there showing all the different wildflowers and vegetation and such that grows here. So you can even give yourself like a little bit of a, a challenge to try to find and identify the different types of items that are growing here on the property. basically seeing how the landscape will change over time as nature reclaims it it's going to always be changing but here is the bridge 
metal and concrete. They do have benches along the way, which is nice. You can sit and take a break overlooking a body of water here. And the rolling hills of the Flight 93 Memorial Site. So I'm going to take a little walk. I'll take you guys with me out towards the middle over the water. And then we'll turn around and get to our next segment. As you probably saw from the photos I inserted, some decent photo opportunities here as well. Thankfully, this is one of the bridges I'm not afraid to walk on. There's no grade of bottom, no rotted timbers. Perfectly safe and sound. The one thing I'm noticing as people walk by, this bridge actually kind of shakes a little bit. It's got a little bit of give to it. Not the cleanest water, but good enough for some frogs and snakes and whatever else. But the bridge does continue onwards and upwards, and the path just continues to a giant loop. Instead of walking it, we are going to take the vehicle. Maybe if you look too, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. The pathway is to keep going up. There's benches along the way. So even though there's no shade, there's at least ample seating to kind of sit down, take a break, or even just, you know, relax, clear your mind, take in the views. And I just spotted something here that makes me feel a whole lot better. Weight limit, five tons. Thank God, because I come in at about four and a half tons. So rest assured, this could hold the weight. And just like that, we are here at the visitor center. Looks like there might be an indoor exhibit. I did bring my mask with me if it is necessary or required, but I'll give you a brief look as to what there is to see up here. And then we'll go to the Tower of Voices. It's up here in front of the building, which is the restrooms here. is a Flight 93 Memorial welcome sign, giving you an overview of the park here, showing you where we are. And then everything is labeled to check out what there's to see. So I was correct, that was a wetlands bridge. So that's natural wetlands. That answers our question on that. Looks like we're up here 
near the Western Overlook. And number four says Future Tower of Voices. Gentle tones of 40 wind chimes pay tribute to the passengers and crew through sound and create a con contemplative space to begin or end a visit. So we're gonna check it out. Hopefully it is working, but if not, something to look forward to in the future. Now, something pretty cool is they actually have like a little diorama here of the whole complex here, if you want to call it that. But we are right here. And as you saw on the map, and you can see here, it's one big circle. You know, you could walk the entire property here. But it all, is all, you know, labeled and gives you just a model's perspective as to how it looks here. So from where we were walking before, which was nice and wide open and expansive here, almost looks like you're walking into a prison with some really high concrete walls. So we'll see what it has to offer on the other side. On the ground they have some Time stamps here for 9.37 a.m. Pentagon, American Airlines Flight 77. Now just to give you a good scale comparison as to how big these walls are compared to me, I know you can see people walking through, but I'll put myself in the middle there so you can see for yourself. So as we pass through the curly white gates here. There's a sign here. Looks like some interior areas to check out. We'll maybe see if we can get in there later. I'm going to keep outdoors right now. But pretty neat area. Just these large gargantuan concrete walls, which almost looks like hieroglyphics. The way they're kind of etched or no, it almost looks like tree bark or hieroglyphics. It's not completely smooth, but it does give it some good eye appeal. So if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be that overlook here that we saw from the bottom. Yes, yeah, so this is going to bring us full circle as to where we started, and now we're going to look down upon where we were previously in the video. Oh, okay. Video bomb. Okay, so quite the view. So I'm going to zoom in and then we'll kind of describe what we're looking at. It's very windy, so if the camera shakes or the wind is making noise, I do apologize. But that's the white marble wall. The wall of names, or I don't remember the official name of it, but it, we did check that out earlier. Directly past that, you see a little green path that goes jet, right to the stone, the boulder where the crash site is. As we come out, the winding path takes you all the way up here. That's why we didn't walk it. It is a long walk. But it is something to consider. But we're going to turn around because I'm starting to get uh, crowded. But just in the distance or two is the wetlands bridge. So good visuals from up here. So here's a pretty cool shot I want to share with you right here. Slowly pan over. And we just have the long sweeping curvature of the wall. So 
So if we're gonna go inside just for safety measures, I will put my mask on and we'll check out inside. Yeah, so they do have a uh, indoor exhibit as well. Since there's some people in here, we're just gonna briefly go through it. So here is a little extrusion window that we saw from over there before. So now we're inside of it and it kind of sticks out into the field here, gives you some views of everything from keeping you protected from the elements. Everything is more tier showing you the location of everything. So one final look, there's a viewing platform. Down the distance is the wall of names. I was correct about that. All right, so I'm glad to get out of there. Got the mask off, got some fresh air. A little bit too crowded in there for my liking. Now, I did plan on giving you a more in-depth, more detailed tour of the inside. There's a lot of things in there to check out as far as, you know, the history about terrorism and the people's pictures from everyone who perished to items from the rescuers who helped or who first responded here. There was a lot in there to see. Just I didn't feel comfortable waiting in line with groups of people, even with the mask on. It just wasn't a good environment. So out here, you know, you could kind of distance yourself. But if you want to see everything that's in there, the best thing to do is just come here for yourself. Take your time, go through it preferably come maybe next year when things are kind of settled down with the whole virus situation but they do you know for the most part people are respecting people's space and most people were wearing masks not everyone most people wore masks are not required here obviously they are recommended and despite me not liking to wear one i did put it on just out of respect for others so now let's head to our final location the tower of voices and once again, I will give you some driving footage along the way.
right, there it is. Tower of Voices. So here we are, Tower of Voices, monumental 93 foot tall musical instrument. Tower of Voices marks the gateway to and from this expansive living memorial landscape. 40 chimes represent the voices of the 40 courageous passengers and crew members. If you'd like to read the rest, simply pause the video. All right, so I'm listening to the park ranger behind me. It is not operational yet, but they're anticipating in the coming days. And something I'm going to be looking forward to hearing how it sounds, a giant musical wind chime of sorts. So even though I'm probably not going to make it back here this year, the best way to check it out is just to stay up to date on YouTube. Just search occasionally, Flight 93, Wall of Voices, and I'm sure sooner or later a video will pop up where you'll be able to hear the beautiful sounds coming from it. There's quite a few people up here, so I'm going to get you some outside visuals. And once I'm able to navigate closer safely, we'll actually be able to go kind of right in the middle of it, looking upwards, which will be for a pretty spectacular view. So right there, they have a little placard there sharing some information about why this was constructed, why it's not operational, basically saying it's still in the testing phases. So as I'm talking, as you're reading that, feel free to pause it if you want to read the remainder of it, but looks like it is kind of a work in progress. It's just supposed to be a visual representation, but it's going to turn into an acoustical one. So hopefully, they said from the park ranger, from what I heard him quote, around the 10th of August, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see. Looking forward to hearing how it sounds though. Okay, so here's your close up view of it. Especially the music I haven't been out in it. Let's actually go inside of it and get a view up for all the chimes that are going to be making the noise here. All right, you ready? There we go. Wow, what a view. I can only imagine what it would be like to stand in here when this is operational. Might almost be deafening, but be a really unique experience. I guess be a perfect backdrop for the outro of the video. So I'm gonna wrap things up here. This was my look at the Flight 93 Memorial site here in Somerset, Pennsylvania. First off, if you made it to this point, I wanna thank you for watching. It's probably a little bit of a longer video. I did try to show as much as possible. Luckily, the weather did turn around. Aside from the wind picking up, the sun actually came out, rain clouds went away. I didn't get to show you as much indoors as I wanted to. I just kind of held the camera up, walked by slowly, showed you what I could. It was just too crowded in there, and I didn't feel like, you know, dealing with all that. So, thankfully, most of it is outdoors here. It's very expansive. If you come here, just keep in mind, wear proper footwear. Bring lots of water if you're coming on a hot summer day. I recommend coming either in the spring or fall, or even in the wintertime, if you don't mind bundling up. But 
depending on what time of year you come, you'll have different views. Some things will be in, in blooming with a lot of foliage. Other things will be wintertime, you know, kind of more visible, less colorful though. But there is a lot to see here. You could literally spend all day here if you want to. Hopefully the information I did share throughout the video with the maps as to where I parked and where everything is kind of situated here helps you if you decide to come here for yourself. It's about an hour from Altoona, about two hours from Pittsburgh. But it is, you know, there's a website for it. There's plenty of information. It's on Google Maps. Come here for yourself if you're able to. It is something that changed the way we live. You know, it's a, a very important part of history that's going to be taught to future generations. And one thing I want to ask you guys, because it stands out to me, if you were alive when this happened, do you remember where you were or what you were doing on 9-11 when those attacks took place with the airplane crashes? If so, comment down below. I'll share my thoughts real quick. 9-11-2001, I was working at a call center for a bank, taking customer calls. And I got one particular call and the customer was on the phone. She's like, hey, did you hear what happened in New York City? I'm like, no. She's like, an airplane crashed into the World Trade Center. I'm like, really? And at that time, we didn't know it was a terrorist attack. We just thought it was a freak accident. And next thing you know, a couple more calls came in. Those people were talking about it. Within 10 minutes, the calls dropped off to nearly nothing. So we went on the internet, on the computer, started looking up what was going on. And that's when the second plane crashed. And we heard about the one at the Pentagon, I believe. And the one out here at Flight 93 Memorial. It was um, a time I will never forget. You know, I was, you know, just doing my job, got notified by a customer and we we're all glued to our computer screens. And for the days after that, even though we did report to work, it was very quiet because everyone was fixated on what was going on, trying to figure out what happened trying to wrap their head around it as to why someone would do this but share your thoughts down below let me know where you were what you're doing or your initial thoughts when you first found out this was taking place but flight 93 here this is ground zero this is the place you want to be to come signify and remember the heroism of all those passengers and crew members because even though they all perished lost their life they did save hundreds if not thousands more so anyways guys questions comments any information you'd like to share feel free to leave it down below lastly i just want to thank you for taking this tour with me i had a great time not only seeing it for myself but to showcase it for you as well so with that said thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you in the next video